Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the extended and unscripted version of the Fullerene tutorial. So in this case, we're actually going to be looking at how you can make different stylized fullerenes in a number of different ways. If you just want a quick and dirty fullerene, there's another tutorial for that on my channel. But today we're going to start by deleting the default cube. We're going to hit Shift A and we'll add in a icosphere. Now, you could change the number of subdivisions so you can actually get more or fewer of those nice little hexagons and pentagons that we're looking for. But I happen to like the default, so we're going to leave it at 2. I'm going to assume that you have the tissue add-on installed. And right away, we're going to hit F3, and it's already waiting for me because it knew that I was going to look for it. We're going to convert to dual mesh. From here, we're going to add a few modifiers, and then we're going to have some approaches where we don't add modifiers. But for starters, I'm going to throw on a bevel, and I'm going to drag that offset down to 0 0.02 with two segments. I'll right click, shade smooth, and right away you can see this is not half bad. We're going to then come up, add a wireframe, and throw it on top of the bevel modifier. I'm going to bring the thickness up, and if you've seen my other tutorial, this will all seem very familiar, but we're going to diverge in just a second. So right away now, this is not bad. I'm going to distinguish this fullerene by hitting shift, hitting sh la la la, by hitting shifty, Y, and dragging that out. Now in this case, I'll just simply uncheck replace original. It's not very original, but it is a different style. We'll do the same thing. Shift E, drag it out on the X axis this time. And now we're going to get rid of the wireframe modifier. And you can see we've now returned to this nice, smooth shaded fullerene. Shift E again, bring it out on the Y axis in the other direction. This time we're going to lose both the modifiers. Both the modifiers, please. Thank you. And now we're going to right click and shade flat. We're going to hit tab to enter into edit mode, 3 for face select, A to select everything, and then alt and E. We're going to choose extrude along individual faces, and you could do something like this or like this, but frankly I think both of those are mm, a little bit less than ideal, so we'll right click to drop all of those in place, hit period, and instead of median point we're going to drag down and choose individual origins. Then we will hit S and scale in. Great. From here, Let's go ahead and hit Alt-E again, extrude individual faces, and now we could drag out, if this was the kind of look you were going for, but I'm going to choose to drag in. And now we have a kind of interesting fullerene honeycomb, if you will. I don't think that looks super fantastic, so we'll add that bevel modifier back in, right click and shade smooth. I'm going to bring the segments up to two and leave it at that, not bad. Let's grab our starting fullerene yet again. Shift D, X, this time out the other way. Again, we will get rid of both those modifiers, and just like in the other one, we will shade flat. This time, just a little bit different, we're going to do essentially the same thing. 3 for face select, A for everything, Alt E, individual faces, right click to snap those back in. S, we're already extruding along the individual origins, sorry, scaling along the individual origins, so S to drag that in. And this time we're actually just going to hit X and then delete faces. Now for this particular fullerene, we're going to add another modifier. In this case, that'll be solidify. I'm going to drag that thickness up and you can see now that it's going in. Right click, shade smooth, and because that looks terrible, we'll add that bevel back again with two segments. There we go. And just like that, we have a number of nice looking little fullerene shapes. Except that one because I accidentally deleted the modifiers off it. And off the top of my head, I'm struggling to recall what I did with it to begin with. In any case, we'll delete it. And right about now, we will go ahead and we'll put spheres on all of the verts here, simulating atoms on the sphere. Shift A, add in a UV sphere. Control 2, let's go ahead and shade smooth there, and then G, and I'll just drag that over there. So. In this case, what I'm going to do is I will tab into edit mode, hit 1 for vertex selection, A to grab all of them. I'll see that there are 80 down here, and I'll go to particle properties, add a system, hair particles, 80 particles, source, verts, verts, modifier stack, yes, random order, no, render, path, no, object, that's what I want. I already know this scale is too big, so I'm going to go 0 0.02, instance, object, sphere. And then I will come over to the Modifier Properties tab, and I'll put the Particle System right at the top. And if you followed all those steps perfectly, then what you'll get is this beautiful, beautiful fullerene-looking monstrosity right here. If you 
found that at all too fast. The other tutorial does actually cover that a little bit more slowly and we'll sort of go through step by step what's going on. But this is unscripted and so we'll do as we please. Now, if for some interesting idea you decided that I like this honeycomb. I want this honeycomb to have those spheres right there. Well, that's going to be a problem because now we've actually messed with this mesh. Now, there are a few ways we could do this. We could go ahead and hit one and choose this vertice, hit shift G, and then say amount of connecting edges. And you'll see that has actually perfectly selected everything we want there. How many verts? 80 verts. We could come to the vertex group, add a vertex group and assign those vertices. Then we could come into particle properties, add in a new particle system, hair, number 80. Emit from verts. Use modifier stack. Yes, random order, no. Let's go ahead and move this to the top of the modifier stack above that bevel. Awesome. Render path, nope. We're going to render the object. Which object? Still that same sphere. I like that sphere. We're going to come down to 0 0.02. And this is where we run into our issue. So you can see, again, these are all over the place because we actually added a ton of extra geometry. So for the vertex groups, we'll add in the density and we'll use the group that we created. And now you can see that I actually have the spheres in place. Great, they're there. So if I wanted to, I could make these bigger. Let's say I want to do that. This is sort of the issue though. Those are actually hovering kind of on top. And I don't really think that that is the look that I'm going for with this approach. I want to be more like this sphere over here where it's clearly in the middle of that bar. Can I do that? Yes, I can. With this approach, no. So the way I'm going to solve this problem is I'm going to remove this particle system and I'm actually going to take this one. I'm going to hit shift D and I'll drag this wherever I want. Now it's important to note that this sphere and this sphere are still the same scale. It should be, I duplicated this one from that one, but they are the same scale. So now I'll grab this honeycomb sphere, hit shift S and I'll choose cursor to selected. And now you can see my cursor has moved to the center of this sphere. Now I will grab this sphere over here, hit shift S again, and this time I'll choose selection to cursor. And now you can actually see those are kind of in the right place. I don't want that wireframe, so I'm going to get rid of it. And I don't want that bevel, so I'm going to get rid of that. In fact, I don't want any of the lines for this specific sphere. All I want is the orbs. So to do that, I'm going to come to the particle properties. I'm going to hit this two here so I get my own particle system not shared with this one over here. And now I'm going to go ahead and uncheck show emitter. I'm also going to come down to viewport display and uncheck show emitter again. Now I've got my spheres in place. And if I want, I can just hit S to scale that icosphere down into the center. And now they're all in the right place. They're a little bit too small. So I'll bring that up to 0 0.03. But this is actually closer to the aesthetic that I was hoping for, which is not bad. But if you are still not happy with where you can put spheres on this object, you might want to go ahead and put spheres at the worst possible place, namely inside the faces right there or inside here, inside here. And we're actually going to use the same trick basically that we did for these. One thing that I should mention, because it is important, is if I were to take these now and just G and move those around, they will move freely on their own. If I grab the underlying icosphere or fullerene honeycomb and hit G again, that will move on its own. I don't want that to happen. I want my spheres to move with it. So I'll grab my spheres, grab my icosphere, sphere, icosphere, by holding down shift, and then I will hit control P and parent to object. Now, if I grab just my icosphere, icosphere, please and hit G, I can move this around wherever I want, I can scale it however I want, I can rotate it however I want, and all of the spheres will follow it. If at any point I don't want those to be there, all I have to do is find this specific icosphere right here, and then I would have to hide this. I'm gonna actually come up to this little option here and turn on the camera for what is visible in renders so I could turn that off if I didn't want to appear in the render. Great. Let's revisit that other issue from before. How are we gonna get spheres into the center of these faces. Same trick. Grab that. Shift S. Cursor to selected. This time, we're actually just going to hit Shift A, and we're going to add in an icosphere. 
Now we're going to scale that icosphere down, and what you'll notice is all of those little points are right in the middle of each of those faces. That's not a coincidence, that's how tissue happens to be working as a modifier, or as an add-on. So, what are we going to do? We're going to tab into edit mode. We're going to see that we have 42 vertices on this icosphere. We're going to add a hair particle system with 42 particles, emit from the verts, use the modifier stack. We actually don't need the modifier stack because there are no modifiers. We also don't need random order. For render, we're not going to use path. We're going to use object, and we're still going to use that same sphere. This sphere is getting a lot of use. Those are quite large, but to be honest, I actually don't hate that. So now if we want to move those just a little further in, again, we will hit S and we'll scale that in just a bit. And you can see, just like that, we've got it on all the faces. We'll do the same thing here where we will uncheck show emitter and we'll uncheck show emitter in viewport display as well. Now, with all of your spheres selected, shift and click your icosphere other icosphere that is, control P and parent to object. And once again, we can now freely move this, freely rotate this, and freely scale this, and we will have no problems. So for the last part of this, I'm just going to do a quick little render setup. If you're interested at all in how I'm doing this, I do have a separate tutorial on using Blender's built-in lighting, but I'm going to go ahead and hit Z and drag down into material preview. I actually like this with the white the way it is, but for the sake of the video, we'll go ahead and we will change this just a little bit. So grab your icosphere, come to the material properties tab and add a new material. I'm going to hit this base color and bring that value all the way up to one for that nice crisp white. Then I will select the other icospheres, not that one. I want the internal, the internal, the internal one. Shift on this one, shift on that one, shift on this one, and then we'll hit Control L and we will make links with the materials. Great. Now they all have that same white material that will show up in my renders. For the sphere, I'm going to go ahead and add a new material, base color, and I'm going to drag that into the red. Then I will go ahead and bring the roughness down to zero. To be honest, that's not bad as is. And then I'll drag the transmission all the way up to one. And now we have this kind of interesting red glass. So that we can actually use this in our render, I'll hit Z and drag up to render. You can see that the lighting looks horrible here. And to fix that, I'm just going to drag out another window, hit Shift F3 for the materials or the shader editor. Then for object, I'll come to world. And to use that same built-in lighting that we have in material preview mode, I'll grab my background Make sure I have Node Wrangler enabled, hit Control T, and for the environment texture, I'll go ahead and hit Open, navigate to World in the Blender files under Studio Lights, and I'm going to go ahead and use the default forest lighting. Now if I hit Z and drag up to Rendered, you can see that I've got that lighting the way I want it. Because glass usually looks better in Cycles, I'll come up to the Render Properties tab, change EV to Cycles, and then I will make Film Transparent. And I'll also use transparent glass. And just like that, I now have several different aesthetics of these nice little buckyballs. And if I wanted to, I could copy any number of these features over. So let's say I really like these spheres, but I think that they'd look good inside this buckyball. I'm actually happier with how it looks in Eevee, so we're going to go back to Eevee. But I'll hit Shift D, drag that out over here, and same idea, grab this icosphere, Shift S. Cursor to selected. Grab all of the spheres, Shift S, selection to cursor. And those are a little bit big in the particle system, so we'll come back to the particle system, click the two so that it's its own independent particle system capable of making its own decisions. And under render, we'll bring that scale down to 0 0.025. There we go. And so these are a little bit less scientific than you might hope for. I'm actually just going to duplicate this again because I like this look so much that I'm going to go ahead and hide these icospheres and do that same effect where I bring those ones over there. Yeah, there we go. In any case, that was a tangent, and but this is all unscripted, so I can do that. I'm going to just keep saying it's unscripted as though that's justification. 
As always, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, humorous, engaging, any of the above, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, and until next time, have yourself a great day.